Now in this video I'm going to start all over from scratch and we're going to go through the whole process of developing and testing locally and deploying to Azure using functions but this time I'm going to do it using the Azure tools for Visual Studio Code. Now you saw some of the Azure tools in the pre in the last month and I'm going to use the exact same extension. So I'll go over here I'll search for Azure tools and I'll install them and you'll see here that there's one for working with Azure functions. All right, with that complete, I'll go to my Azure tools and I'll log into Azure. Click the account I want to sign in to. And here we go. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and start off like I did last time or the previous start off like I did before. And I'll create a new directory. This one I'll talk, call it YTGHCS for GitHub code spaces. Since this is not using the command line. And I'll CD into that directory. And then I'll create a virtual environment inside of this. And finally, I'll open this directory up inside of the code space. So I'll open this folder and I'll open this one here. Now whereas before use the core tools from the command line with the func command to create a local workspace, I'm going to do it instead inside of the Azure tools. And so here in this workspace area here I want to click create function and it's going to ask me a folder that's going to contain the function project, and this one right here. Now, what's going to happen is this one already has a virtual environment inside of it. If the folder you select does not have a virtual environment inside of it, you will be asked to select a virtual environment. So that's why I went ahead and made the, made the folder with a virtual environment. It's going to ask me what uh, type of project I want to create. In other words, what kind of language I want to use. Notice that for Python, there are two of them. Uh, I'm going to use, so use the uh, V1 programming model. What type of uh, function do I want to create? I'll create an HTTP trigger again. And just like before, I will name it investments. This time it's going to ask me to set the authorization level, whereas before the default was function. So here again, I want to choose anonymous. And that'll create the project and I'll probably need to speed this up. All right. Now I want to kill the terminal. I want to associate this virtual environment here, the one that I just created. And now I can do, after this comes up here, I can do a pip install dash r requirements to get the Azure Functions package. All right, now I need to install requests. And also add that to my requirements. All right, I need to, the code that I'm going to use is going to be the exact same as before. So I'll just copy and paste that. So this is the exact same code for the previous function. Now there's one change that I actually do want to make and you'll see why here in a minute. It's that the testing tools for in the Azure functions, uh, in the Azure tools for Visual Studio Code uh, it works better with a post. So I'm going to change this here to you to get the data out of the JSON in the body instead of from the query string. So I'm going to say payload equals request dot get JSON. And then that the coin will be in that payload in a key named coin. All right. Since this is only going to be responding to a post request, I'm going to go into the function.json file and I'm going to remove the get method from the binding. And now I'll switch over to the run and debug panel. And you'll see that now I have a configuration here to um, run this to run this from the from the panel here. And just like before gives us a um, gives us a URL and it's forwarded the port for me. So I'll go over here and I'll copy that address like I did before. I'll create a new rest book. 
Then I'll do a get and API slash investments. And I'm going to need the GitHub token environment variable. So I'll go back to my terminal, go over here, echo GitHub token, copy it, go into my code, my rest book rather, create a new secret, call it GitHub GHCS, paste that value in. This is actually going to be a post. And then it's going to be content type application JSON. Remember the X GitHub token is secrets GitHub GHCS. And then now my JSON is going to have the coin name in it. And we'll put Solana in there. Now I will start the I'll start the project. Back over here. It is running. And there we go, we get the price of Solana. Let's go over here back to the Azure tools. And I'll expand this over here to where I can get to my function. If I right click on it and I can say execute function now. And it's going to ask me for the payload for the body. And I can also test it like this. So if I say coin Solana and you'll see if the response comes up down here. I'm going to stop the development server. And now we're going to deploy this to Azure from the Azure Tools and Visual Studio Code. So I won't need this part anymore. I can go over to Resources and I will come down here to Function App. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to select Create Function App in Azure and I'm going to click Create the Advanced Setting again. It's not really that much harder than using the other one. It just gives you some more options. It's going to ask me for a Function App name. I'm going to call it mempy dash yt-ghcs for GitHub code spaces. The runtime stack, I'm going to choose 310. Again, that's in preview, 311, not supported. You're going to recommend, recognize a lot of this from the command line that we did. Uh, I'm just going to reuse the same resource group because I can put more than one function app in a resource group. And I want to choose the consumption plan. And I'll use that same storage account and also the application insights that it created before. And this one will create a function app for me. All right, that's done. So now if I refresh here, I'll see that I have the mempy ytghcs, and there's the one that I created with the command line. However, if I right click on it and say deploy to function app, it's going to remind me that anything that was already there is gonna be overwritten. I'll click deploy and I can go to the output window and see what's going on. And this one I will speed up. All right, that is now complete. It's given me the URL. However, I'm going to go over here to my functions and there's the investments function. And I can right click on it, execute function now. And just like I was doing with the local version, if I say coin Solana. I get the price of Solana down here, and I can also create a new cell. If I right click again, copy function URL, told I want to post. And this time I don't need to include the GitHub token. I just need to include the content type of application JSON and the JSON itself. If I say coin. Solana. Run this. And again, get back the price of Solana. So that's how you can create, develop, test, deploy a Azure function inside of the Azure Functions tools. Now there's still a lot more that we can do and we will get started with that in the next video.